The dam is about to break. The awareness of this issue is only getting greater, and I do not believe a solution exists at the ballot box. Educated people with vast professional networks in Canada are going to have trouble finding work. How are low-skilled people from India supposed to feed themselves? Is this what a democracy looks like, Mr. Trudeau? Is this an educated democracy of concerned and engaged citizens making the right decisions for Canada? The Ontario Federation of Labour stands with you because workers are workers are workers. When you have a group of people that cannot live without all these handouts, these handouts become a permanent feature of Canadian society, so you will always have to keep voting for it. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Mississauga, Ontario. Now, folks, a few kilometers away in Brampton, a couple of weeks ago, you might have seen the video uh, that we crafted. It was after Lincoln J and I went to cover a demonstration by Indian foreign students who were, well, basically they're demanding the right to stay in Canada, to become permanent residents, ultimately Canadian citizens. I got to tell you, in all my years of covering demonstrations and protests, I never encountered something like this. Not a single person, even though they had signs, even though they were doing a public demonstration, would speak to us here check it out how about yourself sir would you like to come no, on camera no, thanks. no okay then this is a very odd protest usually everyone's champing at the bit to talk that's fine <laughs> okay We've got a lot of camera shy demonstrators here anyone want to talk explain your signs how about you ma'am extend work permit where would you be working right now by the way would you like to talk about what no, this... No, I'm good, thank no? you. Is there um, another organizer coming or...? Uh... No. Oh, okay. There's no ringleader for this or...? <laughs> Baffling. Incredible. Uncanny. And to make sense of it all, we've gone to our source in the Indian community. He goes by the name of Ted Smith. It's not his real name and we have disguised his identity uh, because there might be some people out there that take umbrage to what he has to say. In any event, Ted, you saw the video. Here's a demonstration. It's almost like if a tree falls in a forest and no one hears it, does it make a sound? But we went out there, not a single person would speak to us. It was like everybody had laryngitis. I always thought the idea of having a demonstration was to get your point of view across and all the better if you're speaking to a journalist who's going to amplify that point of view to their audience what happened? Why were we getting the silent treatment? There's a reason why they gave you the silent treatment. It's because the union was present and all this demonstration is for show to build a narrative that this is some sort of righteous struggle. Hey man, what brings you out to this uh, demonstration? Behind closed doors, all my MPs from this area and every major party and the immigration consultants and unions are coming together to try to give these people mass amnesty. Unions in this country have gone from a mandate of economic justice to social justice, and this is how they will get it. They will bring in these students who will work for very little, but it will look like a social justice victory, but the big corporations who use these unions will get cheap labor. The Ontario Federation of Labor stands with you because workers are workers are workers. Goodbye to your good, well-paying union job. We're speaking of Laura Walton. She's the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour. She wouldn't say anything to us either. We only found out after the video what her name was and her position. What I can't figure out, Ted, is that what's in it for the Ontario Federation of Labour to campaign on the behalf of international students I don't see them getting into roles of unionized labor, or have I um, got my facts wrong? It's so convoluted that you don't know where the union begins and the government ends, or where the politics begin and business starts. So this is just about creating a class of people 
that will always come out and vote in a group. And as you see in this country, the unions vote along very specific political lines. Who I would see as being a beneficiary of these people here, it would be the likes of, say, Tim Hortons or another large fast food chain. They're not unionized, certainly. So in in an uncanny way, is the Ontario Federation of Labour kind of selling out the unionized movement just to get cheap labour for big corporations? It's about creating a group of people that do not know how to exist in this country without a handout from the government. All of them, after 18 months of having a child in this country, qualify for the Canada Child Benefit Act, and they qualify for almost everything that you can imagine. We have accountants here in Brampton that specialize in keeping a household income below $90,000, because above that, mark is where you lose all your benefits. When you have a group of people that cannot live without all these handouts, these handouts become a permanent feature of Canadian society, so you will always have to keep voting for it. There are two groups of powerful investors pushing for Canada's population to grow at unsustainable rates, and they don't really care how we get there. One is the Century Initiative, another one, Gerald Bucks, who works for the Eurasia Group. Both of them have gone in the mainstream media and said Canada's secret sauce is immigration. I always describe it as Canada's secret sauce, the fact that we've been able to maintain immigration as a third rail of Canadian politics, that neither the left nor the right has organized a polit- an anti-immigration political movement is one of the very best things we have going for us as a country. You tell me what benefit do they have in this? They do love low-wage people who will keep voting for their buddies to get back into power. Interesting. And speaking of buddies, of course, Gerald Butts being uh, Justin Trudeau's best friend. But, you know, when we look at their case, Ted, um, the deal was... You come over from India or any other country, you take a course, you graduate, and then it's time to go home. And listen, if you want to apply to become a permanent resident, a Canadian citizen, hey, everyone has that right, but there are proper channels to do so. Or was this whole thing, is this all a scheme to take a shortcut, to get into Canada in the back door, come over as an international student. You're not even serious about your studies because in Brampton alone, Ted, as you know, more than 70 diploma mills. I mean, they're not really even legit schools. And it's just to get them into the country and then they can maneuver their way uh, into becoming permanent residents. Is that what this is really all about? Don't ask, don't tell seems to be the current immigration policy in this country. The Brampton Guardian in 2019 had a story about 25 students in one house. This has been going on over here for a very long time. Only now that places outside of Brampton are affected that it is becoming national news. These colleges were set up without classrooms in them is for the sole purpose of bringing in your entire family. Some of these colleges, you go to their website, it looks like an Ivy League university, very palatial. That's just the stock footage. When you actually go uh, to the college, sometimes it's a storefront. However, the education that is being given out at these so-called colleges is non-existent. So we should not be insulting hundreds of thousands of actual international students who are studying at University of Toronto or McGill or UBC and associating them with the students going to these so-called colleges. Because quite frankly, what we see right now is racism. It's discrimination. And there is no room for racism and discrimination in our province. The left is so keen to play the race card. You know, look at that white guy complaining, but you're an Indian, Uh, you came from India, and you're saying this is wrong, so I guess so much for that argument. Let's look at where the world is today. The movie director, Tyler Perry, cancelled an $800 million investment in his expansion of the studio because of artificial intelligence. We are on the cusp of seeing AI harm a lot of well-paying jobs, and it would be irresponsible 
to advocate for such immigration policies. Canada remains one of the only countries in the world where citizens are by and large positively inclined towards immigration. In less than a year and a half, we will have a federal election. Is this sauce for Pierre Polyev to pursue? Should he be making some kind of very pronounced statements on the mess we have with illegal immigration? Or do you think uh, the war room uh, with the Tories, like other political parties, um, immigration is almost a, uh, a third rail issue, kind of like um, abortion or partial privatization of health care? So last word goes to you. Are we going to see some tangible change, at least on the campaign trail, by Mr. Polyev? So, Mr. Polyev, you will win this election, but do not get wiped out in the next election like the Conservatives did in 91 or 92. Do something good for this country instead of your party. Ted, I want to thank you so much for your insight. And you know, folks, uh, I really do appreciate it because, as I said, when Lincoln and I covered that Brampton demonstration, it was absolutely baffling. And I have this to say to the demonstrators, and I have this to say to Ms. Walton, the president of the Ontario Federation of Labour, if you're carrying out a public protest and you are unable to articulate your demands what the protest is for, well, I really don't think at the end of the day you have much of an argument to begin with. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Folks, where do we begin when it comes to checking off all the Justin Trudeau liberal disasters? And one of the more recent ones is certainly the immigration file. Immigration is out of control in this country. Let's send a message to the Trudeau Liberals. Please go to our newest petition, netzeroimmigration.com. That's netzeroimmigration.com. Tell the government to get its house in order. And by the way, while you're there, folks, if you're able to, kindly make a donation so that Rebel News can continue to bring you the other side of the story.